Oh, hey guys, another video. Today I'll be talking about, uh, oh, I'll do a map first, and I'll be talking about Diamond Flask and Vector's Flask, and kind of how I got to those choices in this kind of build and why they're good, the reasons most important. And then after that, I'll show you a little bit more of skill tree optimization. I think you guys like that kind of stuff at the higher level. But for now, I'll do a map. I'm level 96. I slash played three days, one hour, 41 minutes. 19 seconds and I've died 24 times. Show you a shipyard. I've been running some T12s today. It's pretty expensive. So keep that in mind. What I've been doing is I try to roll them double pack size. Usually it takes on average I think 8 plus. But anyways, and I'll put onslaught on them so they'll add 20 quantity to the map at the expense of giving them onslaught. Which is, you know, 20 attack speed, 20 cast speed, I think 20 move speed. So this one um, is fine to do that with. Okay, so what? why did I choose Diamond Flask and why did I choose Vinktar's Flask? I'll be talking about that kind of stuff when I'm doing this map. The reason I chose Diamond Flask is because, uh, it's because it is the most efficient It's the most efficient flask use for a build. Now, it's really hard to quantify a flask value because, you know, it's like some builds just make or break with the flask. So you don't want to... You don't be careful when you're trying to quantify the flask into like a value of point system, but I can tell you for sure diamond is worth it, and the reason is it uh I guess I have to explain what it does first, but the reason why it's good is because you can drop so much critical on the tree or even just drop the whole crit gem in general, and you still have like pretty much ninety five percent critical and how much crit can you drop? you can drop like seven ten points on the tree just for a single flask. And that is uh, very powerful, to say the least. And the other thing is the Diamond Flask, as you can see, is 20, the base usage is 20 charges. So with my reduced flask charge use, that's like 16. I'm pretty much having this flask up all the time, no, no questions asked. I can spam it like I don't know what I'm doing and I still have it up. So it's not even like a flask that you have to choose to, to have up. And the duration is not bad either after they buffed it. So Diamond Flask is very, very strong. Now, maybe you're confused, like, what, what does Diamond do? Diamond Flask, what it does is it, it says your critical strike chance is lucky. What that means is whatever your critical hit is, normally you would just attack a monster and that would be your critical. But with Diamond Flask, when you pop it, it will roll the critical twice and then choose the higher value. So what this means is the only way to not crit is if you don't crit both hits. So, okay, that doesn't sound that great at first, but when you think about it, if you have 50% crit chance and you pop a diamond, the only way to not crit is to, you know, not crit both times, which is 50% squared, and that's like 25%. But then when you start going to like 70%, the only way to not crit is to hit the 30% twice, which is 9%. So you're pushing a 70 crit to a 91, and then in the same way you're pushing a 75 crit to a whatever 1 minus 6.25% is. So you're like starting to get ridiculous uh, efficiency off a single flask zone and that's why I use diamond flask. And the other thing is like at a certain point you're going to start realizing that it's kind of difficult to get good flask nodes. You you like pretty much have no options anymore for like deep flask. If you look at me I'm running like embarrassment sulfur and embarrassing like onslaught flask when I use like a worldly blade. So Diamond Flask is like definitely one of the top flasks that you want to use as always when you're a crit build, I think, because it's always more efficient to drop nodes on the tree or drop some sort of skill gem and use the diamond than to uh, not use the diamond at all. Okay, that's why diamond is good, and I think uh, all crit builds should really consider that as a strong choice. And why am I using Vinktars, really? For the same reason, it's just uh, another efficient way to go about things. What, uh, what is efficient about it? Well, the thing with this kind of build is, like all crit builds, you have to solve your leech problem some way, and that includes the life leech and the mana leech. Now, the life leech is a little more difficult because you have to be able to handle reflect, and maybe you have to do some like calculations with uh, how much leech you need to do in order to mitigate the whatever 18% in red maps or 20% on rares, whatever the reflect number is. Now, I didn't even want to like think about that because usually 2% is not enough. And the only other way to get like leech on the tree is the duelist node, 
below Duelist, there's a note called Vitality Void, or you go Scion, and it's just like a hassle. And then on top of that, you have to solve your mana issues and pad down here to get like Mana Leech, and it's just not even going to save you against reflect maps or reflect mobs not that i do reflect maps because it's not safe with flash but yeah vinktar solves all that but the only problem is there's so many charges used like i use 43 even when specced into like flash nodes uh which don't reduce charges but make you gain charges very fast and have a flash belt it's still very sketchy uh at some moments to um keep my vinktars up i have to be a little bit cognizant of of what I'm doing and the other option is you can drop your other at series flask and run double Vinktars it's much much safer especially in your hardcore maybe that's what I recommend so Vinktars is just another way to solve leech efficiently otherwise you have to do some like weird annoying stuff maybe use life leech gem is disgusting minus 30% deep sauce because you lose a gem or go scion and you lose a whole concept of inquisitor or you spec down here which I'll show you this right now in the following moments of what you can do to have if you like don't really have the options so let me show you like some other options of skill tree optimization and really how to put your points at the higher levels okay so if you look at the tree you're like what you here's what you want to think about here's the reasoning behind it you want to be able to drop points that are not the least efficient that are not important like you you can't drop stuff like flash nodes because that's a big part of your build that's like decided from your build you can't drop templar because you started there stuff like that so you don't want to drop these dagger nodes either for the same reason because they're extremely efficient you know 90 multi like and critical it's like you're not going to get that stuff anywhere else since it's like the closest pathing too so what can you drop as you can see last time i was playing around with jewel 4 point jewel, 3 point jewel, you can kind of drop that, especially when you get like mana from it. Um, you can drop these ES nodes because, you know, they're energy shield. Uh, they're not that big of a deal, not too critical, but, you know, they're still decently efficient. So, okay, so you can drop those kind of things. What do you sacrifice? Nodes that are least efficient. Where do I go? For example, I can go here. Now, the don't get too lost in the details when I start spouting numbers and all this nonsense. It's 11%, 3%, whatever. But the important thing to know is why are you doing this? Um, the big idea is if I go down here, it's going to free up uh, pathing. It's going to put me closer to pathing that is important to me. For example, if I spec into like this jewel node and get this ES node from shield, um, I'm going to have around the same stats, but uh, I'll be closer to this kind of pathing. And more importantly, if you don't have a vague and dagger like I do, and maybe you have a really, really good dagger that does not have the hits can't be evaded, and you roll some accuracy on your gear, you're going to need accuracy somewhere on the tree. And the closer you are to the accuracy nodes, the better, the more point efficient. So if you can, like, repath to this kind of, like, pathing and be closer to the accuracy nodes, that's going to be, like, great, especially when you don't have vague and dagger. These nodes are pretty efficient uh, if you can end up not having to waste any efficiency starting from here. So, for example, three points here you get 12 attack speed, 2 points here, you get 30 damage, and then on top of that, each one of these has 20 accuracy, this one has 20 strength, and this one has 20 dex. So, you know, if you can, like, reach this kind of area, that's pretty good. So let me show you what, I'd, what I would think uh, you would do and the thought process behind reaching there. So you don't want to drop too much deeps, and you pretty much have, like, the jewel here. So you look at this kind of tree, and you're like, okay, how do I, how do I get these points out of here? So I'm going to get a jewel down here, so obviously I can drop the jewel here. So if I drop these four points, then, or if I drop really three points, then I have three points there. But then I can spend a point for 8% tax speed here, so that should be worth it. So you want to, like, repath into down here, over here, in order to, you know, get the most efficient pathing points. So you, you're going to spend two points to repath, so keep that in mind. So this is only a two, you lose four, you spend two. You gain two points, okay? So you count that, and you're like, all right, I got two points, but here I need five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I need to spec out a three. So what am I getting from this, and what am I losing? You are, you are keeping the jewel socket. You are losing 30 int. That's 6% ES, and another 2 6%. So you're losing 18% ES, and then you spec back in to 10% ES. So you're losing 8 ES total, you're losing 16 spell, and you keep the jewel. But then you gain 
of 50 defenses from spell shield. Now I'll show this at the very end how to calculate this because it's the detail that you don't want to get lost in in the big picture. But this comes out to be about 11%. Um, and the same way this kind of two points would come out to be about 13. But anyways, this is about 11%. So you're dropping 18, you gain 10, and you gain 11. So you're gaining about 3% ES. So if you do that kind of specking, you should gain, you know, a little bit of ES. Uh, and you keep the jewel. All right, and then you lose 16 spell damage, which is 1.6 points. But then you can also spec into the aura effectiveness over here, and you would uh, use this point to spec into here. Now this is worth for me. I've done the math already. It's already 4% ES and 10% uh, increased damage. So you know you you lose 2% um, ES, but you gain a whole node. So you're losing a third of a node to gain a node, and all in all, you're going to lose about a little bit of deeps and gain a little bit of ES. And it's going to come out to be about the same, and the character's not going to be that much different. But the big picture that I want to show you is you can do that kind of mini spec and change your character in a kind of like imperceptible way. But at the end of the day, you're closer to the nodes that are more important to you. And, you know, that's one of the things that you can consider when you're optimizing the skill tree. It's not always about pushing the damage. So let me show you what I mean. So... I have seven refund points. That's what I need to calculate. So at the end of the day, my my damages are going to be coming out the exact same thing. So I might lose like you know f 700, 600 deeps or whatever it is, uh, whatever six percent damages. Not a big deal. So let me show you. I spec three points here, two points here, and then I run, refund these four points here. Oh, keep in mind there's also other things to consider that I'm not mentioning. For example, mana loss, which is pretty big. So don't forget about that. Okay, so you see here, I'm going to leave this point to show you at the very end. So my, you saw my ES is going to go up a little bit because this node is, uh, you know, slightly better. I gained about 3% ES or whatever that small number was. I spec into here, I get my jewel back. Okay, and my damage is shitty, right? But then I, I told you at the very end, you can do that final spec of over here. And it's going to be... Uh, pretty much the same ES and you lose a little bit of damage like 700 600 whatever it is so you can the point is you want to see that kind of stuff beforehand and be able to make the big decisions and micromanage everything to be able to make the you know big choices where okay what, what am I doing you know I'm getting the vitality void closer or I'm getting closer to art the gladiator so those are kind of the big specs uh, that I want to show you uh, that kind of get cumulative cumulative from all the small things you can do so let me show you finally end this with what is the math behind this shield thing. So what's happening is it's just giving 50% of your shield. So for me, my shield is 473 and I'm getting 236. Okay, so now you're wondering, how do I know how much percent ES I'm getting? If I were to spec into, you know, whatever percent ES, how, would, how much would that add up to 236? So what you want to do is you want to find out your base ES and then you want to multiply that by 6% to find out how much ES 6% gives you. So let me show you how to do that. You find a piece of gear that doesn't have int, that only has flat ES. For me, 43 on the belt. So you take that off, you see, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, whatever it is, whatever this is, like 200, 100, uh, 84. Okay, I should mention that before you do this, you don't want actually the um this this thing in, but basically you take off the uh belt 43 and you're going from 9227 minus you know 9083. So, that's a 189 for 43. So you do this and you know your percent modifier for your ES is 4.4. Just round that to the nearest like tenth. All right. So what you do then is you divide your current ES by that modifier, and that should be your base ES about approximately. And you don't have to round it if you don't want to. For example, if if you just take this and you take you divide. Oh jeez. You divide it by whatever this is. Uh, four point three nine five. 
you know, that that's around your base. He has 209 to whatever it is. And then you take your 2098, whatever it is, you multiply by 0 0.06. A 6% ES note will grant you about 125. So, you know, if I show you right here, 6% ES note, it grants me about, about that much. So, um, that's how you calculate your, how much ES. You basically find out the base ES by taking off a piece of gear to find your percentage. And then you divide your current by your percentage and then you find out what your base is and then you multiply by 6% to see how much a 6% ES node gives. Now this shield node just gives 50% of this. So as you can see, 50% of 473 is 263. Now each 6% is about 125. So I'm getting about 1.89% worth of average nodes of ES nodes from this one point. So math may be a little complicated, but uh, don't forget the big idea like I told you just like focus on where you want to go in the skill tree and micromanage the details later and I hope you enjoy this video uh, I'll see you guys next time